Hi, welcome to Wellness Wednesday with Stride Wellness. I'm Michelle Nyong'o and I'm super excited to be doing my first segment uh, today with you. Uh, last week I asked for some suggestions about a topic that I could cover and I've decided on one and that is um, how to get unstuck. So if you have any suggestions for next week, please comment in the comment sections below. Um, or you can tweet me at Twitter. My ha Twitter handle is at Wellness Stride, or you can email me. As a reminder, there will be a place on my forum to discuss each Wellness Wednesday topic. So please head over to my website and become a member. It's www.stridewellness.org and you can get in on the conversation. I've received some lovely feedback from some people who aren't able to make it on the live broadcasts, but catch up at a later time. And I just want to say I really appreciate that. So um, feel free to share or jump in at any time um, and we're going to get started. So if you're just tuning in again, my name is Michelle Nyong'o and this is Wellness Wednesday. Uh, so the topic here is how to get unstuck. A few months ago, I took some training on trauma-informed practice through Manitoba's New Directions. It was here that I was introduced to the topic of getting stuck, and I found it not only super interesting, but I found it very informative as well. So I'm going to spend about the next 10 minutes sharing what I learned. Getting unstuck might have a few different connotations for people, so I'm going to clarify what I mean through an example. So let's just imagine that there's a child and, um, and I'm going to be the parent. So I'm going to switch back and forth in this example. So child, mom, mom, yes, why are you yelling? Mom, can I go to Quinn's? Can you be quiet? Your sister's sleeping. I'm just asking to go to Quinn's. Why are you getting so mad? Stop yelling. I'm not mad. Then why can't I go to Quinn's? Well, you won't go to Quinn's if you don't be quiet. You never let me do anything. <sighs> and then they abruptly turn around and slam the door. And you're left saying, shh. As you can see, the speakers have come to what you may call an impasse. An impasse is uh, a discussion or an argument that ends up in a deadlock, a stalemate, or um, a standoff. So I prefer to use the term stuck because this implies that there are ways for us to become unstuck. So for anyone who has had a child, <laughs> I'm sure you found yourself in a similar situation. This can also happen when we speak to a spouse or partner, coworker, friend or any other adult. It also happens for kids when they talk to their siblings or to their friends. So if there has been a person that you get in the same argument with over and over and over again, you are likely stuck. I know that there are some times I get into an argument with somebody and it's like I know what they're going to say before they say it and they can probably say the same of me and that means that we're stuck. When dealing with kids and teenagers, keep in mind that their brains are kind of under construction at this point. Sometimes they don't have the vocabulary for what they're feeling, and being in a fight pattern will likely be one of the times where they have difficulty, difficulty putting a name to the stuck feeling. When you're stuck, you may notice the co conversation is going nowhere. It feels circular and it often, often starts to escalate. escalate. Uh, so the person that I took the webinar through, one of the speakers, her name was Kate Kiernan, and she uses a good rule of thumb. Anytime she, you know, she's in a conversation or in an argument with somebody and she's repeated the same thing three times, um, she knows she's stuck. You may find that there are other signs alerting you to being stuck. These may be, you know, perhaps you notice yelling or frustration. Maybe another clue is um, someone keeps saying that they don't feel like they're being heard or understood. So how do we get unstuck? You can start by using the terminology with your kids. Point out times when you feel stuck. Um, that will give them the opportunity to learn what it means 
You don't have to be in an argument to talk about it either. Discussing it during regular conversation can be more helpful because all parties are calm. By bringing attention to this feeling of being stuck, it highlights a pattern. When we see the pattern, we can make changes. Hey Kristen, thanks for joining. Also worth noting is that it's important to use we language, not um, as opposed to you language. When speaking to teenagers or adults, um, I prefer to say, it looks like we need a break from this for a minute, or we're going in circles here. Um, this just isn't helpful for either of us. But it's not necessary to change the wording. It's just more comfortable for me to talk, to, to use those words. So the reason that we use we language or that we ask to take a break is that conversations are meant to be a shared experience. But when we get to an escalated, escalated um, circular discussion, the conversation is no longer shared. In fact, we may and likely are uh, arguing about different issues. So when I talked about the scenario before, um, there were actually two different arguments going on between the mother and the child. And the child was arguing about never getting their way and the mom was actually arguing about how she was being spoken to. So this is super common in stuck situations that you're arguing two separate topics. Finally, the resolution should be worked on together. Like most skills, getting unstuck takes time and practice. As I mentioned earlier, it's best to have a conversation with a child or teenager about being stuck prior um, to the argument actually happening because both parties are relaxed. I'm sure if you ask those around you, they could point out to times when you get stuck. Talk with your child about how it looks like and what it feels like, and then come up with some ideas you can do together to resolve the situation the next time it happens. If this is happening with another adult, talk about it after a time has passed and both parties appear to be settled. If there's been a rupture in the relationship, taking steps to mend it or resolve the issue will go a long way. There are other skills everyone, even children, can practice to assist with this process. Um, these include deep breathing and relaxation techniques. When we're able to notice that we're stuck and then um, start to calm down by breathing, you know, in a more regulated way, it actually positively impacts our tone of voice and it also helps us choose more wisely the words that we use in the conversation. When one person regulates their breathing and calms down, it actually encourages the other party to do the same. That's something called co-regulation. As with everything that we've discussed today, um, breathing exercises and relaxation are best practice when you're in a state of calm. So let's quickly review. First, hopefully we've spoken to our children about being stuck when they are calm and we brainstorm some ideas about how to get unstuck. Number two, we've practiced some deep breathing and relaxation techniques ourselves. You can get bonus points if you teach these to your kids. Three, if you get into a fight pattern, you notice that you're stuck. Four, as the adult, you're the one taking responsibility for verbally naming the pattern in a way you feel comfortable with. Uh, remembering to use we language and avoiding you language. So example is we are stuck or we're at an impasse or we're going in circles. Hi Auntie Susan, thanks for joining. We're just reviewing some of the topics um, about how we can talk about um, being stuck and getting unstuck. So we're at step number five. Five is taking some deep breaths and this is in an effort to co-regulate. Number six, we engage in some of the things we had previously brainstormed. This may mean taking a break for a few minutes. We may agree to change the topic. Uh, for some conversations and fight patterns, we, we need to just agree to disagree and, and not talk about those topics when they come up. Um, we might find a compromise. So in the scenario I discussed at the beginning, the mother potentially after naming that they were stuck and asking for a break, 
could suggest that potentially the child could write the request to them. And then that way the child um, gets to write out their request, the parent promises to read it, and they both feel like they've been heard and get what they want. Whatever it is we decide to do, it's especially important to remind kids and teenagers that we will work it out together. Reassurance is key to mending a rupture in a relationship. And finally, step number three, seven. So if there's no brainstorming uh, beforehand, or if this is the first time you're engaging in this type of discussion with your child, friend, coworker, or spouse, it's okay to say, we're stuck, I'm getting frustrated, or you could include any other feeling there. And I don't wanna argue. I'm gonna take a few minutes to calm down and then we can revisit this later. The key here is to reflect on what happened during the exchange and think about what they were trying to tell you. Then revisit it with them. Once settled, ask them, were you trying to tell me or ask me? And then fill in what it is you thought that they were saying. This will give them the option to clarify. Remember, the argument may have been about two different issues, so this step can really help. Then, practice, practice, practice. The more comfortable you are, the more natural it will feel. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to feedback. If you want to revisit the steps, I will provide a written copy of this Wellness Wednesday topic in my blog. Don't forget you can ask questions in the comments section or you can visit my forum at www.stridewellness.org and I can also be found on Twitter. If you know somebody that you think would be interested, please share this Facebook Live with them or invite them to come like my page. I look forward to our next Wellness Wednesday here on Facebook. Until then, have a great rest of your week and an excellent weekend. Take care and be well.